Came to love the blues from uh, when I first heard of all things the Blues Brothers on on TV back in the 70s, and that record, you know, Briefcase of Little Blues, kind of woke me up to the blues. And ever since then, I've been a lover and love playing it. Came across East and West, you know, Paul Butterfield band, and it just reached inside of me and grabbed a hold of me, and that I and then I became a lifelong Elvin Bishop fan. I, I mean, I met the man, I've introduced him at festivals, and I still get googly. I just can't help myself yeah, because yeah, he's. Yeah. I'm a fan. It just it just reached inside and it connected with me. And I mean, I swear to God, I wore out with the old needle dropping it on there. I must have wore out three or four of those dang albums. Wow! Wow! <laughs> Went back home to Phoenix, and the Women Blues Review from Antones was there about a month later. We had Tony Price and Barbara Lynn and Lavelle White and uh, Angela Strilly and Lou Ann Barton. It was a great time, and so I decided to see what this blues thing was all about. I was a teenager around the 80s, and um, they, that was right when the dawn of MTV happened, when they had, uh, they, they joked about they had 10 videos and six of them were Rod Stewart. But then what happened was, to, 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 to uh, prevent that from, hap you know, from being boring, they had all those old, uh, they, what they call closet classics, they had all the old Hendrix and The Doors and Eric Clapton. And that was so much better than the stuff that I was supposed to be consuming as, as a teenager in the 80s. And I was going, man, this is cool, especially when I saw Hendrix Live. That was it for me. The first time I remember really getting hooked on the blues, I think I was around 10 years old when Downchild had an AM radio hit with Flip Flop and Fly. And I was really inspired to start playing the blues, I think, when I uh, saw Dave Van Ronk playing at the Winnipeg Folk Festival. And it just blew me away and I wanted to start playing guitar after that. I realized that the harmonica grabbed me at a young age, but it wasn't until I heard Sonny Terry uh, then I was really hooked. And Bonnie Raitt, however, I believe would be single-handedly responsible for my um, induction into the blues. She's uh, probably my, my strongest mentor and influence. And my sister took me to my first uh, concert with uh, Paul Butterfield and the Blues Band and I really dug seeing you know, Mike Bloomfield and Paul and all the guys, Elvin, you know, when he had big hair out to here. Yeah. It was uh, quite, a, quite the time and I've been digging the blues ever since. So when I was 20, I bought the Robert Johnson Anthology. It was a two cassette set. And you know, I wore that thing out, both cassettes. I wore those, I stretched them, I fixed them, I wound them up with a pencil. I wore those cassettes out. I just couldn't get enough of Mr. Robert Johnson. And I, then I knew where that music came from, the, the stuff that I really loved. So, yeah, Robert Johnson. And then all the other guys. Robert Lockwood, you know. Roscoe Gordon. I, I just, I, you know, I just couldn't get enough of these people that really play the blues. <laughs>